heard it said that every new idea feels too early. Take it to committee. Wait for the next election or the next decade. On the front of our bulletin cover this coming Sunday, you will see the plaintiffs from Our Children's Trust who are suing the U.S. government over an ancient idea that at the time it was written, many felt was too early. The idea was put forth by Emperor Justinian I, and it was called the Law of Public Trust. It held that the sea, the shores of the sea, the air and the running water were common to everyone and could not be appropriated for private use. Centuries later, the Magna Carta further strengthened these pub public rights. In 2015, with the support of this amazing law firm called Our Children's Trust, devoted to the environmental rights of youth, 14 young people filed a lawsuit entitled Juliana versus U.S. The case submits that the U.S. government has failed to protect communal assets such as air, water, sea levels, and land to fulfill its public obligation for safety and access. Furthermore, the U.S. government has robbed future generations of the right to clean air, water, and uncontaminated land. If there's a young person in your life, please look up this case and follow it with them. Our life, their future, may depend on it. Jesus says, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. It was Jesus who said the children would lead us. We have to listen and let the children lead us. Jesus's ideas were also among those that plenty of people said were too early. During Roman rule, there were exactly two ways to lead, either with violence or love. Jesus proclaimed that those who lived by the sword would also die by it. And he tried, he tried with his entire life to turn the tide toward love. He was an early voice for nonviolent conflict resolution. His message would later be echoed by the likes of Gandhi and MLK, both of whom were told that their ideas were too early. It's hard to tell, but it seems like by the time the majority adopts a new idea, it's already too late. Progressive Christianity lost a giant in the field this past week. And I want to tell you a little bit about a man who thousands of people considered mentor, pioneer, pastor, and friend. His name was John Shelby Spong. He was born in Charlotte, North Carolina on June 16, 1931. He was raised in fundamentalist churches amid those whose values were, as he called them, racist, sexist, and homophobic. When he was young, he was taught that gay people were sinful, women were subordinate to men, and whites were superior to people of color. John Shelby Spong. Jack as he was known to his friends, was part of something called the Jesus Movement. It was an effort to help us understand the historical Jesus. He was the author of 26 books, which together have sold over 200,000 copies and been translated into every language of Europe, including Russia, Arabic, Korean, Japanese, and Swahili. He passed away this week at age 90. Bishop Spong de described his own life as a journey from literalism and conservative theology that was part of his childhood to an expansive view of Christianity. He came to understand that Jesus had one simple message, which was to love one another. No exceptions. He rebuked biblical literalism and criticized LGBTQ opponents as 
uninformed religious people who buttress their attitudes with appeals to a liberal understanding of the Bible. He said, this same mentality has marked every debate about every new insight that's arisen in the Western world over 600 years. It's a tired and threadbare argument that has become one of embarrassment to the cause of Christ. Before he became a bishop in New Jersey, he served for 20 years as a priest in North Carolina and Virginia as a rector of St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Richmond, known as the Cathedral of the Confederacy, because it was where Robert E. Lee and Jefferson Davis had worshipped, he took down the Confederate flag that flew above the building. Reverend Kelly Brown Douglas, a close colleague of Bishop Spong's, said he was trying to find the kernel and sweep away the husk of what it meant to follow Jesus. He was always seeking after that truth. What he truly came to understand is that doctrine and dogma don't make us Christian. Doctrine and dogma don't make us church. What makes us church is respecting the sacredness of every single human being and creating a world that does that. And the church leading the world in doing that. John Shelby Spong was, by many accounts, way too early. In fact, I read several posts about John Shelby Spong accusing him of being the reason that Christianity has seen such a decline in the last two decades. I think John Shelby Spong is the reason many of us stayed in Christianity over the last two decades. I know that's true for me. His best-known book is called Christianity Must Change or Die. We have several copies of it in our church library, which is now located behind the chapel right next to the pastor's office. One of the great gifts of serving at CCC in Tiburon was that there was an endowment that allowed the pastors to bring amazing speakers. So Marcus Borg and Rachel Naomi Remen and Matthew Fox and Bishop John Shelby Spong were among the people who came to speak to the congregation and the community. And John's visit changed my ministry he was not afraid to say things that many of us felt. The Bible's not literal and can only be understood as metaphor. He didn't believe in that great grandfather God up in the sky who would intervene or punish upon request. And he was totally clear that God is not a Christian. God is not a Jew or a Muslim or a Hindu or a Buddhist. All of these are human systems which human beings have created to help us walk into the mystery of God. He would say, I honor my tradition, which was Episcopalian. I walk through my tradition, but I don't think my tradition defines God. It only points me toward God. That was so helpful to me. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. Whoever wants to be first must be last and servant to all. It's been more than 2,000 years. Are these ideas still ahead of their time? That all depends on us doesn't it? How we live and how we love. God's love is our only meaningful inheritance. And it's only useful if we can figure out how to give it away. I believe, and I think you do too, that these are ideas, these are shared values whose time has come. It wasn't so in John Spong's lifetime. It wasn't so in Jesus or MLK or Gandhi's lifetime. May it be so in our lifetime. Amen.